Hi, this is Monica. Welcome back to Sats and Bees. Uh, today we'll be making a beeswax candle. If you have never made beeswax candle, I will uh, put a link on the description box below to a Brambleberry uh, video that describes in detail how to make beeswax candles and what are your different options and what could happen if you do certain things. So today we're going, so I went to the Dollar Tree uh, a few weeks ago and came across these jars and I just thought they were really cute and they just reminded me of bees so I thought they were perfect for beeswax candles so I'm going to be making a beeswax candle for one of my neighbors and uh, I hope she likes it so we're going to start off by putting the container on a tray and putting it in the oven at 200 degrees um, it's pretty cold in Texas today so I want to keep the container a little bit warm so the wax will adhere to to the the walls of the jar otherwise you see a whole bunch of spots so let me put this in the oven and I'm just going to let it sit there until I'm ready to pour the wax Next, I'm going to be using this type of container. This is what I use to make my candles. Um, I like it because of the material keeps the wax um, warm longer, so it's easier for me to to make the candles, especially when I'm making um, artisan candles like um, like in shapes of ice cream or cupcakes or so on. It just um, helps me manipulate the wax better, and it also has a nice little handle. Um, we will be putting this in a double boiler uh, to melt the wax. Never ever put wax, uh, beeswax in the microwave because it will explode. So always use a double boiler. So I'm going to be measuring my wax because I have not made um, a candle in that jar before so I don't know how much wax is going to take. So I just we're going to be putting in approximately I'm just going to put 298 grams uh, and whatever's left over I'm hoping that this is enough for that jar um, if I do have some left over I have a mold ready um, that I also use when I have extra wax, which happens to me. Um, and I just put them in here. So I'm going to let the wax melt. And uh, once it's melted, welcome. Hey everyone, so we're back. The wax has melted. It took about, I want to say like 20 minutes. And a lot of stirring. But, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Make sure I don't drop it. Um, it's fully mounted. And I apologize, the lighting is not as great in here because we are in my kitchen and not in my studio. So I was too lazy to bring all the lights out. Um, so, yeah, that's that. So. We have melted the wax and it is recommended that when you pour uh, beeswax, you pour it at 160 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so right now we are at 190. Um, so I'm just gonna let it cool. Um, and while we're doing, we're letting it cool, I'm gonna prep the container. So let me take it out of the oven. It's been sitting in the oven at 200 degrees this whole time. Um, maybe I should have put the wick on before I put it in the oven. Because it is a little hot. But it's okay, we'll manage. I'm going to let it cool off for a little bit because I can't touch it like this. So I'm going to let it sit here for a minute. I think uh, in the future maybe put the wick on first or we'll put it in for so long. We'll use an ugg glove. 
if my up gloves looks like crap now because my husband took it out to the barbecue. So we're gonna have to buy a new one that will be used inside the kitchen only and then he can have these for the barbecue. So uh, for the candle, we're gonna put a wick. I'm gonna let this guy heat up too. I used a little glue gun. I got this one at the dollar store. And I am using, oh my God, nothing. Oh, glue all over. Oh, also I forgot, uh, when you're making beeswax candles or any kind of candle, uh, always cover your, your area. Uh, protect your, the area that you're working on because this can be messy. So, you know, better safe than sorry. So for the candle, I am using a CD 14 inch wick. Uh, if you've never made candles before, again, I will leave the link to the Brambleberry video on how to make candles. Uh, the key to making a uh, successful candle, I almost touched that too, to making a successful candle is the temperature of your wax, the temperature of the room, the temperature of your container, and very important, the size of the wick. Uh, the temperature of your wax will control uh, how it looks, the aesthetics of your candle. Also, if you're putting scent, um, it'll it's like you know it'll control how what the uh, cold throw is, which is uh, when you walk up to um, the, when you put a uh, candle up to your nose, how it smells, and then the hot throw is when how it smells when the candle is lit. With this candle, I will not be adding a scent because it's beeswax, and to me, adding scents to beeswax is just blasphemy. But that's just my humble opinion. I think that if you wanna add a scent, why not use like soy wax or something? Uh, beeswax has a really beautiful natural honey smell. Um, why ruin it? It's just such a natural, ingredient uh, or you know why color it or scent it just just leave it alone um, I got my beeswax um, about a year ago I believe yeah I think it was a year ago I was still living in California and one of my neighbors um, I forgot what the story was but he would go and collect bees that uh, so I guess people would call him uh, when they had like bees nests or beehives in, in their properties or the yard and, and they wanted them removed so he would go in there and remove them and he would keep the bees and make honey, sell the honey at the local flower shop um, and all the proceeds from the honey would go to the boys club or something like that. And uh, one day he was the, the husband of the uh, neighborhood president and so one day we were at a, at a, get, a gather, gathering and uh, we were talking about this and you know I, I was already making products and I asked him if he had any beeswax and um, he said he didn't but he would start considering making the beeswax and that's how he started making all the beeswax was for me so I would buy them all from him and I think that you know when you put a lot of love into something um, things just turn out better so I think, you know, all the love that he put into his honey and making the beeswax, I kid you not, this is, this beeswax has the most aroma I've ever seen. I have never even, I have not been able to find any other beeswax that smells like, with such a strong honey smell. So I, I really love it. So I only give this to people that um, I care about. So I'm giving this to my neighbor because she's really nice and we become really good friends. Um, I'm new to Texas, so making friends when you're older can be a little challenging and I, th I feel pretty blessed. Okay, so the container has cooled off, cooled down. Um, we're going, I'd like to put the wicks with, with the glue because that way it'll stay uh, in its place when I pour the wax, so I just pour a little dot. They do sell uh, glue dots, but I don't really make that many candles. Um, 
to invest in that. So this, this is good enough for me. So try to put it in the middle. And let this guy It's going to dry. Now you can put uh, two chopsticks or popsicle sticks. Uh, I do have wick holders, so I'm going to go ahead and get that um, to make sure this guy stays. Okay, we'll be back when it's ready to pour. Let's see, we're still at 168, so it's still pretty hot to pour. Um, so we'll give it a few more minutes. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. We have now reached one, oh, 158. <laughs> Let it get a little too cool. Let's hope that uh, it's okay to pour. Let it work quickly. So I have these little wick holders here. I got them on Amazon a while ago. So one of the things that you need to remember is when you pour the beeswax onto your container, you want to do it all at once so you don't have um, different layers on your container. So we're going to pour and you don't stop until you fill it. Now I'm going to fill it up to the little tie there. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I do have dry wax here. That smells so good. Um, so I'm going to put it back in the double boiler and let it uh, heat up so, until it has no more wax there and then put it on my mold so I can reuse it again. Um, before your container gets too cold, uh, once you have poured in the leftover wax, uh, just grab a paper towel and um, just wipe it inside as much as possible and then you can wash it. Now for this guy, I have turned the oven off and uh, once it solidifies just a little bit more, I'm going to put him back in the oven and just leave him there uh, for about four hours. Uh, the beeswax does not need a lot of curing time like you would with soy wax. So this is ready to burn, uh, I would say by tomorrow. Um, I will hold off before I give it to my friend. Um, I'll probably hold off about four days, five days, just to make sure everything sets. Um, then, yeah, there we go. So we made a beautiful beeswax candle. Uh, this smells like honey. has no scent, so you can use it during dinner, at your dinner table. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching. See you next video. All right, y'all, note to self, before you put the candle back in the oven, make sure the oven is not too warm. So if you can see, sorry for the shaking, I'm gonna take the whole tripod here. My candle wax has liquefied. <laughs> which I find hilarious. <laughs> so I don't know what it will, the final product will look like. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. I don't want to move it. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it there for a few hours until um, the oven's cold and the wax solidifies. Um, I'll take a picture and show you guys what the final product looks like. But yes, mishaps happened. So do not put your candle in a warm oven make sure your oven cools off and yes i can see my oven needs to be cleaned <laughs>